Hello, everyone. Welcome to another IR capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, our topic is the UK elections. Today, you must have heard the shocking news this morning that the second debate between the two candidates, that is Rishi Sunak and uh, Liz Truss, was interrupted by a medical emergency in the team. One of the reporters fell unconscious while the debate was in progress, and therefore it had to be abandoned. So we do not know when the next debate is. So we only have the first debate and the second debate part of it to be analyzed. I'm sure you all know, follow the sequence of events in the UK. Mr. Johnson resigned basically because the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, resigned from the cabinet and several other cabinet members also resigned and it was difficult for Boris Johnson to continue as Prime Minister and therefore he resigned. But he announced that he'll continue till a new prime minister is elected. That would be take a little long time because it is unexpected. There's a midterm elections, unexpected. So the first process was to select two candidates from several who appeared in the first instance. And the members of parliament of the Conservative Party, the Conservative Party is the ruling party and Johnson's party. And so for two more years, the power will be for the Conservatives or the Tories as they are known. And the Labour is waiting after two years to contest elections and beat the Conservative Party. Anyway, so the first was that, that the members of parliament who belong to the Conservative Party voted on about six or seven candidates. And the last two emerged. One was originally the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer or the Finance Minister, uh, Rishi Sunak, who is of Indian origin. Everybody knows that he is the son-in-law of Mr. Narayana Murthy. He was the uh, front runner. And the current Foreign Minister, because she has not resigned and therefore she is still Foreign Minister, while Sunak is the former Finance Minister. And uh, uh, Liz, Liz Truss, who is presently the Foreign Minister, were the front runners. And uh, Sunak had a fairly good lead. And that took them to the first BBC debate, uh, which took place a few days ago. After every debate like this, public debate, there will always be a snap poll. And the snap poll, it was found that they were neck and neck, 39 and 38. It cannot be closer than that. And so it was bit indecisive. Anyway, the debate doesn't take decisions. After all these debates, they have to go to the 160,000 leading members of the Conservative Party who will elect a leader, and he will be the Prime Minister. So now we are on the run, in the run-up to the election of the Prime Minister by the Conservative Party members. Those who elected these two people were the Conservative Party members of the parliament. So they chose the front runners. And now 160,000 people will vote sometime in August. And the results will be announced on September 5th. And the new prime minister will take over on September 6th. So there is considerable excitement and tension about this, not only in UK, but also in India. Uh, because one of the leading candidates happens to be of Indian origin. And this is the first development of this kind of an Indian origin person becoming so close to be the prime minister of the UK. So first we have to examine what their platforms are. What are they planning to do and what are their programs? They belong to the same party. So programs have to be close to each other. But since they are contesting against each other, each will try to show that he or she is a better conservative than the other. And therefore, this debate was concentrated on that. And there are several issues, starting from economic issues, which are always crucial, because Europe 
is in ferment. Europe is in a, in a complete disarray. There is no leadership in, the, in Europe anymore because Angela Merkel is gone. His, her successor is new. Uh, President Macron has lost his majority in parliament. Boris Johnson has left. Then who is there to lead the European Union or Europe itself? Of course, UK is not in the European Union. So in the, at a time when there is a crisis, a war in Ukraine, in which NATO and the European Union are involved morally, if not physically, at that time, the, it's very crucial to have an able prime minister. So the first question that they debated was about their perspective, capability, and also their agenda as far as the, uh, uh, the economic policy is concerned. So in that, they both have more or less the same ideas. But um, Sunak believes that he has to tax the bigger companies. That is one of his platforms. Uh, but Liz Truss opposes it. She thinks that if this is done, uh, then uh, the, uh, the, the lower the companies will become more attractive, but they will become less competitive. The bigger companies will not be able to compete in the world market. So there is a, a difference of opinion on this. Who should be given tax cuts to whom? So Sunak's point is that if you give it to the bigger companies, that will encourage the smaller companies also and the production will increase. But Liz does not believe in that. That is one issue. The second issue is China. Uh, both are, of course, opposed to China. Both of them believe that uh, China is the biggest threat to the United Kingdom and the world. And therefore, each of them has a plan to deal with China. And there are several of them. And uh, one of the things that Sunak has announced, just to embarrass her op his opponent, that he is going to close down the so-called Confucius Institutes. You know, Confucius Institutes are kind of cultural centers established by China in many parts of the world, including India. They start by teaching Chinese language, and uh, then they go on to teach culture, uh, about Confucius theories, and basically doing some kind of brainwashing of foreigners. And um, of course, it is also an opportunity for us to understand them, what their methodology is, the languages, etc. So we also have some Confucius centers, institutes, but Sunak says that he's going to close them down. And one of the points he made was that actually these were established at a time when Liz Truss was the education minister. So he's blaming her for having allowed Confucius institutions to be set up. So when she says she is opposed to China, uh, Sunak wants to undermine her by saying that, look, you are the one who brought this about. And that's probably the reason why he picked up the Confucius Institutes to be closed down. But both agreed that they have to have a proper agenda to deal with the China. The third issue is, of course, Putin, how to deal with Putin, uh, because that is what the biggest crisis that is facing Europe at this moment. And uh, then, of course, the pandemic, what is the position of the pandemic? How much has Sunak done as finance minister to deal with the pandemic? How much has Liz Truss has done in order to uh, give the right message to the world? In which, of course, she failed because uh, UK was one of the uh, countries which was worst affected by the pandemic. So there, each one will say we did what is possible and so on. And then there was this funny issue of clothing of, of Rishi Sunak. There have been several um, you know, videos, etc., saying that this man is spending a lot of money on his clothes. And so, you know, he's a very rich man. He may, he's a millionaire himself. And his wife is supposed to be a billionaire, daughter of uh, uh, Sri Murthy. And so, Narayan Murthy. And so, there were some stories that uh, she is not paying taxes. She is keeping her money outside UK. And finance minister's wife doing a kind of like those things. There are some lot of hate, you know, uh, hate mail 
and uh, hate TV videos, etc., were in circulation. And the clothes story is that somebody said that you know he's spending too much on his clothes, and um, this is not in the tradition of uh, of prime ministers. And then somebody said that, uh, but look, at least for us, her jewelry are buy, bought on the streets of London, while the Rishi Sunak suits are made in Seville Row, the most expensive suits in the world. But uh, Listras did not walk into this trap. So she immediately said, well, I respect uh, Mr. Sunak's taste, um, uh, designer clothes and so on. He's a well-dressed man. So she did not get dragged into you know, how cheap her earrings are. So, you know, such things happen in, in debates of uh, this kind. You may remember at one time when Angela Merkel was accused of using unfashionable clothes because she was from East Germany, from a worker's uh, background. And all her life, even as chancellor for many years, she did not wear very stylish clothes. And Angela Merkel said, well, I am only the ch chancellor of the country. I'm not a fashion model, she said. So there are so many different approaches to this. So from uh, economic policy to the, the dress of the candidates came up in the, in the first debate. But at the end of the debate, uh, they were very close, 38 and 39. And therefore, there is no um, guarantee as to who will win the final election in, uh, uh, in, in August and become prime minister in, in September. So there are lots of difference individually, though they belong to the same political party, and they may perhaps serve in the same cabinet in the future. It's quite possible that whoever wins may invite the other to join the cabinet, but they are from the same party. But it was surprising that they had so many different opinions about various things, even though they belong to the same party. Uh, one of the conservative party leaders of the same party criticized both of them. They said that, uh, if they become, they come to power, either of them, he had no particular choice. And he said that this is very puerile, very childish kind of uh, election campaign. And uh, if they do this, we will lose the election later. It's an embarrassing campaign. I don't know what he meant by it. He called it very childish and we have to raise the standards. That was the advice of a conservative party. And as far as the Labour Party is concerned, they said they are very happy that uh, these two, either of them becoming prime minister is good for the Labour Party because they can win the uh, next elections. So, as I said, both were judged to be on equal footing and from taxation to clothes, everything was, uh, was discussed. And, um, and then came the second debate. That is where this calamity occurred. While they were debating, uh, one of the you know, commentators, analysts, well-known uh, person, she just collapsed while Liz Truss was speaking and there was a big noise. And she immediately rushed to that person and she was recovering, but they decided not to continue the uh, debate. So another debate will come, we don't know exactly when. And the second debate, the China issue became very contentious uh, because each one accused the other of being soft to the Chinese. And also to point out who is, who is more against the Chinese than the other. So that they were vying with each other uh, to be inimical to China. And the, both of them agreed that the biggest threat to the UK in the future is going to be uh, China. It is not clear how much Sunak will push his four policy proposals. He has made four point proposals about China. First, I already mentioned to you to close what Confucius Institutes in the UK, then to build stronger diplomatic security alliance against China, to use MI5 to help British business cooperation, and to examine the ease of banning Chinese acquisitions of key British firms including strategic, strategically sensitive tech firms. So these are the four things that he wants to do. Press was, was less firm in acknowledging the threat 
She was not less firm. She also stressed the threat from China, but she appeared defensive because of her past report. So she had to repeatedly say that I am also against China and as prime minister, I will take action. Then they debated what their stand would be on Vladimir Putin if he turned off the gas supply to Europe, which is a big risk. Rishi Sunak said that a year and a half ago, he oversaw the biggest armed forces uplift since the end of the Cold War. So what he was saying was that the British Army is quite capable of meeting any threat from Putin. And he said, I also worked with all my finance ministers to put in place a sanctions package, the likes of which we have never seen. This we know. NATO and the US has imposed very strong sanctions against Russia. And he said that he will continue that. It requires toughness to stand up to him. And it does require all of us to go through difficult times. Part of us standing up to Putin is realizing as a country, what is that going to do to our energy bills and having the resolve to get through that. There's a lot of different, different ways we can stand up to him, but certainly we must stand up. And I will do that. UK will do that under my leadership. Of course, Sunak uh, Trust had said that uh, uh, Sunak's uh, economic policy is wrong, to which he said, I think it is fair to ask the largest companies to pay more because my plans only apply to the largest companies. For smaller companies, nothing is going to change. They are getting help to employ staff. They are getting tax cuts on that. Trust said the price of food is a huge issue. And this is a global crisis. We know it is being exacerbated by the crisis in Ukraine. Fertilizer is more expensive. Grain is more expensive. Feeding through to the cost farmers are having to pay. And one thing I would do is to reduce the red tape. But it's also important. We are resilient and we have a good food supply in the face of these global shocks. And we are not solely dependent, particularly on countries we can't trust. So that gives a, well, basically, tax cuts. He is for tax increase, while she is in favor of not increasing the tax. And as for loyalty to Johnson, Sunak is far behind trust, uh, because it was his resignation which triggered, the, triggered Johnson's resignation. Russ continued to be the caretaker foreign secretary in Johnson's team and may even include Johnson in her cabinet if he wants to become a minister after the elections. He has been saying that he will become a Tory backbencher. And he referred to the job of the prime minister as the best job in the world. So now he didn't want any other job, he said. But now there are reports that he's going to become the secretary general of NATO which is a very uh, position. So there will be many more debates and interviews to come. And these issues will come in different forms, depending on the audience. They're going to travel to different parts of the UK and therefore stress the issues which are most prominent in, in those spots. But behind this particular election, this is the point that we must note as Indians, race may be an important factor no one wants to discuss. Nobody wants to raise this issue. Would you accept an, a non-European to be the prime minister of UK? Everybody is whispering, but nobody is speaking out openly on that. But many people believe that behind this election, there may be a factor of race, and no one wants to discuss it. In many ways, Sunak is British maybe more British than some others, but his color may well become a factor against him. This is because if Sunak becomes the prime minister, it will be a big shift in UK politics, as he'll be the first prime minister of Indian origin. Since the race is very close, this is the other race, the running of the election is very close, we do not know when the people will focus on this issue particularly in India, are holding our breath. We also are not discussing it. We are not showing, we are pretending as though we are not interested in this issue, but I'm sure everybody 
is whispering to each other whether this will come true or not. So, but I, I presume that uh, they are mature enough to judge these people uh, as to who is best for them. And they will not go on the basis of place. But you never know. And anything can happen between now. So this is the position of uh, UK elections. And uh, please follow it. Because in your examination, naturally, all these questions will arise of, the, of UK politics, which is very important in Europe. But we should always be very skeptical about integrity of politicians, whether they are in India or elsewhere. Because they operate in a different kind of circumstances. It's a matter of survival for them. For those of us who are outside politics watching it, it may look very silly and it may look very rational for some of them to behave like that. But there are, of course, very many politicians everywhere in the world, including India, who are considered uh, very principled, uh, their integrity is assured, and so on. But then they are criticized them because if their integrity is so good, they will not be of any use to us. If he is a friend of yours and if he doesn't talk to you for fear that he'll be accused of corruption, then what is the use of having a friend? You know, such questions are raised. So in the case of the uh, uh, you know, resignation of about 22 ministers, there was a clear reason for it because Mr. Johnson was behaving in a very strange manner in his personal life. Very many things I don't need to mention all this here, which are scandalous. And uh, this was getting too much. And uh, Rishi Sunak felt that uh, it doesn't matter, even if the government falls, he would resign. And when he resigned, 22 ministers resigned. And that is very significant. And that is why probably you thought that it was a very principled move. Well, it looked like a principled move at that time. But now that when we see that among the Conservative Party itself, there are so many differences of opinion, possibly there was a game behind all this. Somebody was conspiring to change the government, upstate Johnson, and to become prime minister. It's quite possible. So there may be other factors. And the, of course, race factor came only later because nobody knew that someone of Indian origin will come up as a contender, even though he had a good record and everything. So that's a new factor which may influence it. But on the whole, it's a very, uh, there cannot be a stronger democracy than UK even though they don't have a written constitution. It's a very strong democracy. And um, what happens in UK gets reflected in other parts of the world. So in that sense, they always stay with the constitution. They go through the proper procedures and they will elect the leader of the Conservative Party or the next prime minister for two years. And the two year term, is, that four, five year, four year term is over. Then um, there'll be a new election. And there is no guarantee that conservatives will come back, but maybe a change. So you never know what the motives were, but as long as the procedures are followed and the constitution is followed, nobody can complain. Thank you very much.